a president. He'll always be meathead. <laughs> All right, so you have a choice. Do we talk about the State of the Union? Or do we talk about the memo? Or do we look at a video of adorable puppies going down a slide? <laughs> I joke, because you're gonna get all three. <laughs> first, first the speech. It had so many high notes, you'd need Mariah Carey to sing it. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. <laughs> of course, others saw it differently, and by others, I mean cry baby chuckle buckets. The raw meat was ugly, uh, and then the appeals to fear mongering. He implied, and he did it deliberately, that dreamers are gang members. His racist and hate filled words and policies and proposals are still being resisted in the Congress. There was a lot of dark talk, there was a lot of uh, manifestations of threat. Ah, uh, somebody airlift a pallet of Depends. There's a lot of poop on those floors. <laughs> anyway, sour grapes is to be expected. Why would you praise your opponent after he wiped the mat with you? And that's the problem with team sport politics. Even when there's good news for the country, it's bad news for the party. And there's a lot of good news on jobs, ISIS, the economy, all good, but we could do better. But the Democrats remain sour. Schumer looks like he's the penguin from Batman. <laughs> he's trying to pass a softball-sized gallstone. And Pelosi looks like that gallstone is about to hit her in the Mercedes. And the rest of the Democrats, they all look like they shared the same hemorrhoid. So what's, what's the problem? Well, first, that speech wasn't for them. It was for you. I thought it was too long, but for you, it's not long enough. 90 minutes of positivity about this great country after eight years of moaning about America. This speech was a water cooler in the desert. So for Dems, your good news is their bad news, but also their bad news is your good news. So in the future, here's a handy measurement for success. I call it the Pelosi, Pelosi Scowlometer. Look at that. The more she frowns, the more you should smile. All right. Which, which leads me to, which leads me to the memo. The week was fraught with anticipation, as if the royal family was giving birth to a panda. The nation wanted answers. Their thirst wouldn't be quenched until they heard this command. Release the memo. <laughs> well, good work there, dubbing. Yes, the memo. Finally, it was released, and it became the Super Bowl for nerds. Now, if it's all true, the dossier was put together by Christopher Steele with funding from the DNC and Fusion GPS. Then they played it up to media outlets. Then the Justice Department asked for surveillance warrants. But according to the memo, the application didn't disclose the role of the DNC or Clinton campaign in funding the dossier. The memo also claims that former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe wouldn't have sought the warrant without this dossier. Now, maybe it's me, but it's got Clinton's stink all over it. Yeah. All roads lead back to the perv and the pantsuit. <laughs> Sounds like a good TV series. I wonder if Trump thinks it's disgraceful. I think it's terrible. You want to know the truth? I think it's a disgrace. What's going on in this country, I think it's a disgrace. The memo was sent to Congress. It was declassified. Congress will do whatever they're going to do but I think it's a disgrace. <laughs> you know, I think it's a disgrace. <laughs> but you know, he's right. The Dems wanted to nail Trump so badly, they were willing to use an unvetted, hyperpartisan dossier to do it. Using this dossier to get a warrant, that's like me using Monopoly money to buy a Porsche. <laughs> Look, we spent the last year hearing about collusion between Trump and Russia, and all along, the real collusion was committed by the perpetrators of that narrative, meaning the media, Democrats, and their government allies. This whole mess is brought to you by the same people, and that's not cool, right? Adorable puppies going down a slide.
Good puppies. Good job. Can you do it? Yay. Come on, puppy. Yay. Puppy, puppy. I told you there would be puppies. <laughs> Yes! Let us welcome tonight's guest. He had no qualms diffusing bombs tougher than senior year calculus. It's former U.S. Marines bomb technician, Staff Sergeant Joey Joe. And another hero. <laughs> his, jo his jokes are drier than powdered milk. Writer and comedian David Angelo. And the real hero. If you can't handle her smirk, then you're probably a jerk. National Review reporter Kat Timpf. <laughs> Finally, the jolly green giant sends him hate mail. Former bodyguard, massive sidekick Tyrus. <laughs> All right, Joey. You got the State of the Union. You got the memo. Take your pick and run. Two State of the Union addresses, 2011 and 2013. And so 2011, the Tea Party came to be, and we had all these freshman Republican congressmen. And you could see them would be so funny because Obama was really good at saying things like, you shouldn't pay more taxes than you should, so let's pay our fair share. Right. And so you see Republican con congressmen going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but they were eager to clap. You yeah, know, they yeah. wanted to. They just needed Boehner to tell them when to do it. Yes. And so I guess the Democrats went into this one like with a game plan much easier. Mm -hmm. From the set, let's set this one out. Let's just sit there, you know, left hand, left knee, right hand, right knee, and leave it alone. So to see them sit there through some of the things that he pointed out, Trump wrote a speech that dared them not to celebrate this country, and they didn't do it. Yeah, he set up the trap. He said, if you're not going to stand for this, he talks about the flag. He set up these little, like, minefields, and they just, well, that's a terrible metaphor I for you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, look, I'm, I'm batting like 900 with mines, okay? I had one bad day. You had one bad day, one bad Joey. Day. <laughs> one bad day. I had a leg or two up on you. Can't have one bad day. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> All right, <laughs> David. Uh... What about the memo? Well, the memo was good, but we all kind of wanted more out of the memo, I right? feel like. It didn't give enough secrets. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they should just open it up. If you have TSA pre-check, they should let you in the vault for like an hour. <laughs> Anything you get, like supermarket sweeps, you know, like any documents. <laughs> That's a good idea. But here's the thing. The thing that was in that do the memo, mm -hmm. I already knew. Really? Let's, sh let's show the tweet. Yeah. Can we have the, tw the tweet? Yeah, here. This is from March 2017. This is you. Yeah. I can't read it. It's too far away. I'll read it for you. <laughs> Possibility. Dems invented the Russian thing, fake server, etc., as a pretext for FISA, and the news has just been carrying water for them. Ooh. <laughs> the most trusted name in news. Yes, yes, yes. You were like a psychic with really interesting glasses. All right, speaking of interesting glasses, uh, Kat, um, mm -hmm. what would you like to talk about? Would you like to talk about the amazing uh, uh, speech that Trump gave or the groundbreaking, earth-shattering memo? Oh my God, okay. <laughs> I'll talk about the memo. I'm really, really glad the memo was released. Yeah. I wanna see all the things the FBI does not want me to see. Right. 100%. But I think we need to take a look at how this was able to happen in the first place and look at reforming this entire area of government where we take the Fourth Amendment more seriously hmm. so it's not so easy to surveil American citizens. You know, I will agree with, agree with you here. Um, because that's the thing that bothers me. Some Anybody could like create a questionable dossier about my life yeah. <laughs> and it might not be questionable <laughs> might not be questionable those two years uh well anyway uh <laughs> tyrus uh thoughts on on the memo thoughts on your dossier yeah that's, <laughs> that's why there's no unicorns kids <laughs> It was a donkey dressed as a yes. unicorn. Uh, see? <laughs> <laughs> so, you're quite, uh, you know what? Here, here was my frustration this week. I, I thought the, the State of the Union was, was very good. I thought it's always good to hear positive things about our country because we don't hear enough about them. Yes. But I was, I was looking for one thing, and I thought maybe it was going to be infrastructure mm -hmm. that was going to bring 
the sides together or start some kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. Because after the State of the Union was over, those of us who love Trump still love Trump. And those of us who hate him and blame him for everything in the entire world that's going wrong, they still hate him. And to tie it in with the memo, it's kind of the same thing. Right. If you if you don't like the Russian investigation, if you if you have issues with the left, you're going to support the memo. Right. And if you're, you know, if you, if you love Trump, you're going to be there's that's what we needed. If but my issue with that is just Paige. That's the guy like he's <laughs> damn, every every group has one and we have him <laughs> and that dude just can't. And then when he tweets, I'm just like, don't tell you know, this didn't mean the only one I don't want to hear from more than than Paige is Cruz. Mm -hmm. Like those are the two guys I just don't want to hear from. And I just I just keep waiting for something that's going to start bringing us together and i just feel like the divisions just keep lines keep drawn in the sand and there's no middle ground you know like if you're gonna my book i kept thinking about, i'm working on a book it's like living in the great divide mm -hmm. like, is it about mountains no it's about just walking through my neighborhood at the grocery market because if i walk through liberal Avenue, and i get booed at and when i walk by a conservative i get cheered it's just crazy how divided we are that's why you've just got to walk on the conservative side. i'll go wherever i want I'm you know what you could unite us all you know what unite us all Besides alcohol, Russians, like they played on America's key attribute, which is uh, well, not it's not a key attribute. It's actually a consequence. The team sport politics of a binary system. They played both sides. They played the Democrats. They took money from the Democrats. They played with the Republicans and it, to create disruption. It worked. I think you just nailed it. And the. the our arrogance is that it, we had to be in on it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the that's the <laughs> ironic joke. Exactly. We weren't in on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. All right. We got so much more to talk about privately as well. All right. What's up with Trump's border wall? See what I did there? Because I didn't. Mmm. That's bad for grain free. It's so healthy. Dot farm. Be very afraid of his barricade. Sources tell Fox News that I am very attractive, but also <laughs> prototypes for Trump's proposed border wall are virtually impassable. It's true. A series of tests conducted on the wall samples show they could withstand torches, jackhammers and saws better than the barriers that are on the border now. And all but one were impossible to get over that it was this one. Come on, Kari. <laughs> Come on, Kari. Come on. <laughs> That's teaching him a terrible lesson. <laughs> Critics have called Trump's wall proposal everything from irresponsible to stupid. But there's logic behind how the new wall will be used. Based on topography, need, and budget, each border sector will extend an existing fence, replace an old fence, or add a secondary wall, allowing agents to apprehend immigrants in an enforcement zone. It's a trick wall. It's a, it's a secondary wall. But there's a fence on the border already, yet liberals always forget that part. Instead, they act like Trump's the first person to come up with this amazing idea. So basically, Trump's wall is a new and improved version of something that's already there, yet it doesn't have bipartisan support. Maybe Trump just has to sell it better. Are you ready for the most radical international border feature since Niagara Falls? Sick of playing tennis, racquetball, and squash with a partner when you'd rather play solo? Then you'll love Border Wall 2000. It's the ultimate multi-purpose wall everyone can enjoy. Need a site for the X Games? Border Wall 2000 converts to a half pipe. Wish you could see Bob Ross's landscapes on display all in one place? We've got happy little trees for days. And the best part about Border Wall 2000, it's been certified unbreakable by the Kool-Aid Man. Oh, yeah. More like, oh no. Plus, the first 100 visitors win a ride on the upcoming Space Escalator to the moon. So visit Border Wall 2000 today. That's what we need. All right. David, thoughts on the wall? It's two walls. Oh, boy. Well, how long is it going to take? And aren't we, like, on the cusp of flying cars? Not that I want to be like... <laughs> but it's 2018. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, that's the one concern I have. Yeah. You know what it'll be? It'll be, uh, like, it won't be a flying car. It'll be a drone that can carry a human. Yeah. Yeah, it'll a flying just, car. Like, pick you up and you'll just fly over like <laughs> At least the little children, that's easier with a drone. I've heard, I haven't tried that cat. 
Cat uh, thoughts. Uh, are you excited? I'm excited. An impenetrable wall. It's kind of, you would like that around you. I live with it around me emotionally. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, I think that a better way to go about it would be to end the welfare incentives and also end the drug war to keep the gangs I... from coming over here. That way we wouldn't need to spend tens of billions of dollars on a wall. I know that's not a popular opinion. I know that that's not a joke, but that's just what I really think. And sometimes that's just how life goes. Oh, are you going to cry? Not right now. I'm going to wait till after the show. <laughs> okay. She has a crying corner in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, uh, Tyrus, I look at this deal. The, to the, the Democrats are ignoring the fact that they kind of won on this. They're going to get 1.2 million or maybe even more uh, uh, people that are going to be, you know, put through the path of citizenship. Yeah. He, what was he called? He was called Amnesty Dawn. Like, he took a lot of, yeah. a lot of shots yeah. uh, from... For trying to make a deal, but they don't want to deal with him. Yeah, no matter what, they, if they said everyone would have got a pass, they would have found something wrong with it. I do, and there wasn't a joke because I agree with it 100. Everything you said, mm -hmm. although the idea of being there to see someone, <gasps> we made. Oh my god! Are you, are you <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a. You know, that's the one was shorter, so they're like you know the, the hop over and you made it. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Damn. You know, like that's <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty funny. I mean, that was, and I hadn't seen that, that type of uh, artwork since uh, I took DMV classes in high school. That was <laughs> yeah. insane. Like merge this way or the Red Blood Highway. It was kind of cool. I learned so much. I but, learned so much. Uh, Joey, uh, what do you think? What do you think? Hey, listen. I, th I think that Trump sold this wall. That, I mean, he was elected from this wall. So if he's not going to build the wall, he's got to reconcile that with his voting voting populace. The American people elected him and the wall was his biggest talking point with that being said they're pretty happy about having money in their pocket right now yeah. so if he's ever going to go a different direction now's the time and do it by deal because the democrats have proven themselves to be almost incapable to work with so uh if it's going to be something other than what he's promised now's the time to do it with a deal as far as just the whole issue in general i grew up in a town textile town 75 percent hispanic i've seen both sides of this issue from a very personal standpoint mm -hmm. And uh, if we're going to do anything, uh, have the, fix the immigration system. Yep. But we have to have we have to have some sort of security measure, like Kat said, a D, uh, an incentive that isn't there, the incentivization, incentivization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to stop people from wanting to come here, and the idea that it's it's a free ride when you get here. I think Hollywood does that. Oh sure. Yeah. It's like I see Hollywood. I don't want to come here. You know. Um, <laughs> I, I do think uh, uh, no matter what, Trump's going to build this wall, and even if we don't use it, it's just going to be somewhere yeah. in New Jersey. He's going to be like, like I, he's like, he's like, you know what it is? It's his Obama. This is his Obamacare, yeah. right? And so think about that. So once Obamacare came into being, the other side wanted to dismantle it. So once he puts this wall up, you're going to have an entire party that are going to, and their slogan's going to be. Tear down, down this, this wall. wall. And it's going to be yeah. a very good slogan. The problem is, it could be that the, the wall works, and then they're not going to want to tear down the wall, or it'll be too hard to tear it down. Does that make sense? I think Kat hit on a big thing, too. Sometimes walls can be built that you don't necessarily see that aren't physical. Making it harder to get eligible for welfare and, and food yeah. stamps and things like well, that, that takes away from American citizens who need it. And on a personal note, I was having a discussion with some people this weekend. One of the ladies said that, the hardest thing was she had two young children, and when she went mm. to go get, you know, services that she needed, they were very rude to the to her, the English speaking ones, and they Absolutely. were and they were like, no, it's not for you. You have to wait. But the, when the other ones, when the people, the immigrants that came in, they had all this stuff for them, right? And they had that's, a translator for them. Exactly. And they had all these other things for them, and this one, she was almost being like stared at like mm -hmm. we don't do that here you need to know yeah. this and you know that and it's almost this double standard Interesting. and if if you're if you come here illegal you shouldn't get any yeah of those no, no cutsies those should be reserved for our citizens first no cutsies all right we gotta move on everybody everybody deserves the same chance coming up a california high school teacher thinks our military is the lowest of the low i have a feeling we're going to disagree with him so long boss
Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Alicia Cunha. The nation's deadly flu epidemic is showing no signs of easing. At least 53 children have died and 16 of those deaths were over the past week. The Centers for Disease Control is also reporting record hospitalizations. Making things even more difficult, the vaccine is not very effective against the most common strain of the virus. But doctors and health officials say it's still the best defense. A flu shot is recommended for everyone six months and older. The man behind Hawaii's false missile alert is speaking out. He says he thought it was a real attack and not a drill. He says the on-duty call that came in on January 13th didn't sound like a drill. I'm Alicia Cunha. Now back to the Greg Gutfeld Show. Should he recant his stupid rant? I speak of California high school teacher and city councilman Greg Salcedo. I was just going to call him. But, uh, why not? Why not? It's easy. All right. As you know, this jerk was caught on tape bashing the military. Apparently, he launched into the tirade because two kids in his history class were wearing Marine Corps sweatshirts. Roll it, Gladys. If you join the military, it's because you have no other option. Because you didn't take care of business academically, because your parents didn't love you enough to push you, and then you didn't love yourself enough to push yourself. Think about the people who you know are over there. Your freaking stupid Uncle Louie or whatever. They're dumb. They're not like high level thinkers. They're not academic people. They're not intellectual people. They're the freaking lowest of our low, not morally. You know, I'm not saying that they make bad moral decisions. Just, they're not talented people. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> And I already called him a <laughs> Can't do it again. Anyway, uh, some have called for his firing, but the best response may have been from retired four-star general and White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly. What is your reaction to that, knowing that these are, he's teaching a bunch of 17-year-olds yeah. this? Well, I think the guy ought to go to hell. <laughs> I think he's going to be there. Salcedo has been placed on administrative leave by the school district, whose superintendent says there'll be, quote, disciplinary me measures taken. <laughs> He'll probably like that. Well, I have an idea for his punishment. Make him watch this on loop for eternity. <laughs> I don't think he deserves that. Joey, I go to you first for no particular reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure about this guy. Um, you know, of all the things he said, the worst thing was probably when he said they don't make bad moral decisions. That's probably true. We don't always make the best moral decisions, you know, at 2 o'clock on a Saturday night in Destin, Florida. Yeah. And, uh, and I have a 9-year-old little son now, and so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but really, this, this made me so mad. Um, so the premise that he's working on here is that the military is undereducated, and really what he's doing is talking to these high school students saying, you only go there if you don't do well here. Right. And, but that premise is completely false. So not only is he really stupid, but he's also spreading lies. I'd love to meet the Marine that took his girlfriend, because this is coming from somewhere personal. <laughs> yeah. You know, here's, here's the deal. Almost... Almost 90% of the military has a high school uh, education as opposed to less than 60% of civilians. Almost eight, over 80% of officers have a four-year degree or higher as opposed to 30% of civilians. So there's some facts. There's some data. And then, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, oh, you know, uh, say it. Here's the deal. Right? Here's the deal. This guy's been a mayor, a city councilman, and a teacher, right? I'm qualified to do all of those things, <laughs> right? right? He, he couldn't be United States Marine if that's the only thing he wanted in life. And that's where I started my career. Yeah. So to go after the education or, to, or our motivation, whoa, people believe in something bigger than themselves. They want to contribute <laughs> to something that might take their life or their legs. Oh, my God, they're the lowest of the low. Listen, dude, I'd, I'd challenge him to a physical contest with the one limb I have still intact. Wow. And, uh, uh, Tyrus? Uh, I just he I, felt, I think he felt he could say this because he doesn't know anybody. He's so cocooned in his own well, world. Well, first of all, I have to, you know, disagree with him. You said girlfriend. He didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> it's just, that's that whole different kind of anger. He just, <laughs> Leave Trevor you know. alone. Uh, and the other thing is, on his moral high ground, does it get cold up there? You think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, is yeah. it always, you know, yeah. 75? I think this is the, the problem with 
and I'm going on a limb here, but I'm assuming he's a Democrat yeah. and a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm just guessing. Yeah. Just guessing. <laughs> For the people, but he loves the people. So um, he is literally the reason why they can't win an office. It's that type of mindset. He thinks you're doing him a favor. And he makes, as a teacher, he makes anywhere from 32 mm. to 30, and judging by the way his students respond to his speech, probably on the lower end of the 32. <laughs> and has to get a part-time job in the summertime to supplement his income. So, because I went, I graduated as a teacher when I saw that guy pass. I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to try something else. So it's not for him to talk about the military. And one of the reasons people go to the military is to further their education. So his entire rant was just his moral high ground and his horse because he didn't have to pick up a gun in himself and go defend the country. What, what, do you, um, what about you, David? I think, he should, I should think he should get his job back on one condition that he spends a year embedded somewhere <laughs> I mean, imagine he would actually get some learning experience they should have like one battalion that's all like uh just like professors and <laughs> <Marxists>. <laughs> 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 uh no i mean yeah this guy i mean look i i didn't join the military because i know i'm like too much of a loser <laughs> it's like that's I, I would, agree with him. I would not last. I would not last. I'd be home on the bus in the second day. What about you, Kat? I just love that he's saying people in the military are dumb when he's making these kind of comments in a room full of recording devices. Yes. <laughs> and, I mean, this guy, was he drunk? Like, just to stand up there and be like, your Uncle Louie is stupid. I mean, you're getting paid to be a teacher. I saw a better thought-out lesson plan from Jack Black's character in School of Rock on his first day as a substitute teacher. That's true. All right. I, but I want to, um, I got to wrap it up. But I want to make a bit, the bigger lesson here is that schools fail to assess life experiencing when they're hiring teachers. This guy obviously knows nobody in the military, which tells you that he has no life experience. Because everybody here knows somebody in the military. So he's a sheltered, self-involved and this will end up killing, this will kill education. A typical veteran would impart more knowledge to kids than a know-nothing jerk like that. And I would I'll also include not just school, but in networks as well. Places like Fox News and places like CNN need to hire people like Joey, hint, hint, <laughs> because they have more knowledge. And avoid people like David Angelo. All right, up next. <laughs> they are. A scientific study says conservatives are better looking than liberals. Who are the science deniers now? <laughs> that our appearance steers our political beliefs. For proof, take a look at this montage of incredibly sexy Republicans. <laughs> That is delicious. <laughs> but here's here's the uh, where, come on, come on. Here's where researchers are full of poop. They concluded that because life can be easier for good looking people, they get more credit than they deserve and they're blind to the struggles of others and that makes them lean away from liberal policies like more government aid. Explain these eggheads, quote, not having faced the challenges of other citizens, more attractive individuals should be less supportive of remedying these challenges for the general public. For more, we ask the world's most handsome man to comment. <laughs> sexy. Uh, Tyrus, you buying this? No. No? <laughs> no, and that's not the reason why good-looking people don't help because they have to deal with the haters they're always mad because they're good looking so when they get successful why would they give back screw them like, <laughs> haters are going to hate I, I, we've had this this is like the second week in a row we've had these scientific yes. things on who's good looking and who can be a kid longer and it's all like who's doing this like we're not paying for this with our tax dollars are we no but i, I mean, love these segments i mean it's just it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I hate it i just i, I 
it I, drives me nuts that you generalize people. If someone's good looking, usually it's the people that are really attractive to get picked on the most as kids. But they get like always hear like you'll see a really you'll meet a really beautiful girl and she'll talk about in high school how girls pulled her hair and they hated her and, and everyone was mean to her because she was pretty. They, yeah, know? but they're lying. <laughs> Oh, I was bullied. No, everybody was bullied. Everybody was. No, they were probably the bullies. Mean Girls. Didn't anybody see that movie? Speaking of cat, mm. do you buy this? I'm not sure I'm qualified to comment on this study because I don't think I know how to tell if someone's hot or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be out with my friends and be like, oh, that guy's like trying to talk to me. And they're like, yeah, cat, he's asking you for change. He does not have a home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm. I'm like, I can change him. Come over. Yes, you will change him because he's yeah. defecating on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> Joey? Hey, look, I think in this day and age, attractiveness is just how hard you're going to work for it. Are you doing the cult of CrossFit or mm -hmm. what are you doing? So it kind of makes sense to me in the sense of if your personality is to wait on the government or God to bestow gifts upon you, then you may lean liberal and be ugly. But if you're ready to get out there and work for it, hey, we're conservatives. We get work done, right? You know, so... <laughs> No offense, no offense, Hanoi Jane. I didn't mean to trigger you with that one, so <laughs> getting work done. Uh, David, uh, you're uh, slightly swarthy. Uh, Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think liberals are necessarily uglier. No. It's the expressions. <laughs> you're like, you'll never, like, like, are you serious? <laughs> Conservatives don't do that. You yeah, know? that's true. That's true. You cannot be. Are, uh, <laughs> that's like a liberal expression. That's a liberal expression. That I've really seen is. that at Starbucks so many yeah, times. Yeah, I like, just want a coffee. You know, I do think it's. I do think part of this is true, and the other part's false. It is true that good-looking people benefit from society more more often than the plain because they're afforded more opportunities because human beings gravitate towards good-looking people. So yes. good people don't have to uh, try so hard. We perceive good looks as a commodity. This is why whenever you see like public nudity of a really good-looking person, it's weird because we're thinking, why are you giving that away? That's only – usually on nudist, like nudist camps, they're not attractive, you know, because no one's asking for it. <laughs> So, but there's no, like I've said this before, there's no activist group for the plain or the ugly. There's no uh, Martin Luther King for the plain. There's no Gandhi for the ugly. But it really is inequality. The second part, conservative people actually do get suffering. They do understand it, except they see the suffering as a way, as an individual challenge, not something that the government should be trying to fix. Or a government, it should not be totally governmental. All right, they're rapping me. Yes, I'll take that. The applause. Oh, I love this next story. Oh, coming up, a killer whale that can talk. Finally, something that makes them interesting. Gorka. <laughs> Researchers say they've taught a whale named Wiki to imitate human speech and have recordings of the whale saying phrases like, hello. Hello. Hello? Hello? That doesn't sound like hello to me. Let's try another one. Let's all listen very carefully. Here's the researcher getting the whale to say one, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. I think the whale went number two. All right. This is a little more complicated. Uh, it's a proper name. Now, listen carefully. Here's the trainer in the whale saying Amy. Amy. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> That's creepy. How is that Amy? All in all, I'm not impressed with that talking whale, especially since my whale, Lawrence, can recite Shakespeare. Now is the winter of our discontent. All right, Greg, I've played your game. Now give me a fish. Ah, <laughs> uh, stupid whale. All right, uh, Kat, 
Um, I think whales are, are a depressing animal because you're a mammal, but you don't have any limbs. And you're also a fish, but you need to breathe air. It's kind of like you're not, ex you're not in both worlds. It's kind of sad. It seems all right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. I think that saying that these whales can talk yeah. is a big stretch. <laughs> they can say hi, they can blow raspberries, and they can say bye. Yes. So they swim up, they go, <laughs> they say bye, and they swim away. Yes. If I want a conversation like that, I would just call up my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> you know, uh, David, are we giving whales more credit than they deserve? It's not like they can even open a jar of pickles. I bet one could. With what? I don't. Yeah, I don't put. I am <laughs> suspicious of these things, and I, I don't like the trend of them learning language. <laughs> like we don't need like more opinions in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're gonna have a Yelp account. Yeah, they are. It's like oh, I came for the krill. I was so excited. It's disappointed. <laughs> like yeah, I'm giving the Pacific Ocean three stars. Yeah. <laughs> And also, like, aren't Too much parrots salt. better than that? <laughs> yeah. Aren't what? Parrots are better than yeah, that. Yeah, I don't like parrots. Uh, I don't know. They're too repetitious, you know? And they're always, like, they're always, like, staring at you when you're doing stuff. You know, um, when you kill people? <laughs> parrots are great witnesses to crimes, Joey. <laughs> you know the thing is about whales, Joey? If they were really smart, why haven't they invented anything? You know, they have these, these big brains, but there's no whale bike. Well, you know, what happened? There's a whale industrial revolution. Well, the, there's a whale, and maybe it's actually a dolphin, but they call it a whale that has like a giant sonar on its head. Yeah. You know, we have one in Atlanta at the right. aquarium. That's kind of impressive. But listen, this whole story kind of pisses me off. I've got a Frenchie. I can't teach my Frenchie what part of the grass you should poop on and what part you shouldn't. And here there's a well that can talk, and my Frenchie doesn't know where to use the bathroom or not to bite my hand when I hand him a treat. So I, the whole thing kind of gets to me that I don't know how to teach my dog what to do. And mm, that's well terrible. Maybe, the, maybe you should get a well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyrus. I have a feeling you love this story for yeah, reasons. Well, after hearing you, I, I hate you for being a part of this story. <laughs> You don't know nothing about whales, and the, this once again goes to the arrogance of science. No, no, no. Killer whales speak three languages. Yeah. They have their own language. They also have the ability to feel each other's feelings. They're so far ahead of us in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. The fact that you would try to take something that physically does not have our windpipe, mm -hmm. cannot speak the way, and can mimic our sound shows how smart they are and how stupid we are. They don't make bikes great because so they don't have to because they can <laughs> map the ocean with their brain. So <laughs> their only problem is that they have meddling people and smart asses like you who make fun of their greatness. It's oh. terrible. <laughs> this was a great story, and you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Blue... Uh, Blue so, Planet 2 just came out I love that series, I'm enjoying it And they had this great scene, if you guys haven't seen it Where the, the dolphins were running And there was these giant uh, false, kill, false killer whales, Greg, it's something different You won't know what it is, so don't ask <laughs> We're chasing them, and then the dolphins turned around And they talked it out yeah. They literally stopped the gang war, talked it out, and they fished together. So, I yeah, think, I they think have their own imp language. I imparting human behavior on slippery creatures. I'm not. I'm part of the Dolphin about, Project. I research wet. this stuff. They talk to each other. Yeah, yeah that's a they little... Why would you want to talk to us? stuff. Yeah. They're, you know, they're in the ocean for a reason. They didn't evolve. Yeah, they evolved there. No, they didn't. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> You just like them because you're big and they're big. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. And you like unicorns because they're tall and slender, right? Yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't go anywhere. That wasn't fair. Don't laugh at that, Joey. <laughs> All right. More after this, I believe.